Okay, we're going to do a chicken leg dissection. And first we can start by making a um, dissection tray. And all you need is aluminum foil and some sort of wax paper. Or paper plate would work as well. Um, but I'm going to take the aluminum foil and fold the sides so that we can make it into a tray. Uh, because we are working with raw meat, you want to make sure that um, you're, if you're working on any surfaces, that you sanitize the surfaces when you are done with the lab. So that I have somewhere to place the chicken parts as we are dissecting. Okay, after you make your tray, you can place your chicken leg into the tray. Uh, I'm just using um, household kitchen scissors. You can use really any type of scissor. It doesn't have to be anything sharp. You don't need a scalpel um, or a knife. You can just use the scissors. Now don't forget about with safety. You do still want to be careful. The chicken legs can be slippery. So anytime that you're cutting, make sure you're cutting away from uh, your hand or your body. And I do recommend keeping it down on the tray as you cut and it will help to keep it from slipping as well. Okay, so we're gonna look at uh, four tissue types. Uh, first, we're gonna see epithelial tissue, we'll see nervous tissue, we're gonna see the muscular tissue, and we're gonna see connective tissue. Okay, so this is equivalent to looking at uh, the lower extremity. Um, this is the tibia and fibula we'll be seeing. So we'll see um, the ankle joint as well as the knee joint. Okay, so let's first look at the joints. Uh, what we see here, um, looking at the, this white shiny um, uh, connective tissue, this is hyaline cartilage, okay? And that's the cartilage that wraps around um, the distal ends and the proximal ends of the joints, um, or the, the bones, so that were form the joints. And that is what helps to protect or give gliding motion and protects the bones. If this wears down, that's what we call arthritis. Okay, so you can see how this is a hinge joint and it's actually moving. This is the joint actually moving, not the skin. Okay, that's the hinge. This end, at the proximal end, this would be the knee joint. Now, you can really see the ligaments here in the knee joint. So there's a ligament right here and it's connecting. And ligaments connect bone to bone. So you can see I'm actually cutting through that ligament right there. See how tough and fibrous that is. So let's look at this one. Let's see if we can find one here. There's one right here too. Okay, so there you see that is a ligament. There's a ligament right here. Now these ligaments are short. Um, remember they're connecting bone to bone where your tendons are gonna be long because they're connecting the muscle to the bone, okay? So if the, we were looking at the knee joint on a human, um, this may be the medial ligament right here. See how that's connected there? Um, this would be the ACL on the inside here. This would be the lateral ligament, which again, you can see this right here. Try to do it without cutting it. And then you would have a posterior ligament deep inside the joint. Let me cut that joint right out of there. There we go. Now you can see right there. That would be like the ACL right there, that ligament deep inside the joint. Um, what we see here, this is the skin, this is epithelial tissue. So this is going to be um, the epidermis that we're looking at, okay? And notice how thin that membrane is. Okay, it's not th thick at all. And then underneath here, that yellow that you see, okay, that yellow, that is the adipose tissue or the subcutaneous layer. Okay, so it's really hard to see like on the inside where like we're, the, the follicles and the blood vessels and all that run, it's just so small. So we can see the epidermis and you can see the subcutaneous. Now, <clears throat> these chicken legs are connected, or I'm sorry, the skin of the chicken leg is connected to the muscle with fascia. Okay, see that fascia there, that shiny membrane as I'm pulling back? 
you can see that there. There's a good, a good view of that membrane. Take a look at this one too. <clears throat> This one's completely connected, so as we pull back of it. Okay, so that right there, that opaque membrane, that is the fascia. Now the fascia runs along the whole body from the head to the toes, and um, it wraps around each muscle, um, the bundle of muscles as well. Okay, so there's more fascia there. So it's a thick fibrous, um, it is thick and fibrous. All right, <clears throat> all right, so back to this chicken. So if we pull the skin back, again, we saw the epidermis in the subcutaneous layer, and now I'm going to pull that back a little bit here, okay? So the next connective tissue we're going to look at is the tendon, okay? So that white, see that white there, okay? That's connecting to the bone at the distal end here of the chicken leg. Okay, it's a little, little slippery here. Okay. Um, and then this is the muscle tissue. Okay, so this is dark meat, and um, there is a difference between dark meat and white meat. And so on a chicken or turkey, for example, um, dark meat has more blood supply to it. It tends to be a little bit fattier in content. Um, <clears throat> but the, the, the purpose of that is, is that this is where your strength comes from. And so your legs, um, the, the large muscle groups that require a lot of strength has a lot more blood flow through it. And so it will look darker in color, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna look at these bundles. Okay, so this is skeletal muscle and skeletal muscle has the uh, striated um, bundles of muscle tissue. And you can see here's a bundle, here's a bundle. And within each one of these, you have little, little bundles. So you can kind of see the different type of, if I pull on the tissue like this, you can see those striations of that tissue. Okay, which is gonna look different than you know a cardiac or a smooth muscle or organ uh, tissue. So as I look inside here, okay, so we saw ligaments that were on the distal ends, and here's another, actually here's another ligament. There's more cartilage. Now this would connect to the thigh. Okay, so um, and here you see a little bit of blood. That's part of the bone that we actually are seeing there. Okay, so that's a little bit of the red bone marrow. And these other white tissues inside here, okay, so this is this is a tendon. See how it's connected to that muscle bundle? Okay, and then that's connected to the bone down there at the distal end. And then we also have some nerve fibers running through here. Okay, so these are nerve fibers right here. Okay, that's a nerve. So remember, the nerve sends signals to the muscle and tells the, you know, the, the muscles to move, which then moves the extremity towards the tibia here. And we'll be able to find the fibula as well. The other thing that's interesting is that when you look at skeletons, um, like in the classroom, like an anatomy skeleton, um, you see the bones, but the bones, you know, tend to have hollow spaces between them, like the tibia and fibula or the radius and ulna. But on living creatures, there's all kinds of tissue that's between those bones, okay? So you can see how well protected your bones really are with muscle tissue. And the other interesting thing too is remember that muscles pull, they do not push. And so what they mean by that is that when you contract a muscle, it causes the joint distal to it to move. So this would be an extension and flexion of the lower extremity if this was the tendons pulling back on that joint. So you can see it move a little bit, okay. All right, so here, we got a nerve fiber running. Oh, I'm sorry, no, that's a tendon right here. See how that tendon's connected to the bone? Okay, and that would be connected to the muscle. Okay, this is a nerve fiber right here. Okay, now what it's connected to though is the fibula. And the fibula is a small bone that runs along the tibia. Let me just cut this. Meat and tendons right off of there. And what I'm looking for now is you can see how the blood vessels actually run in and out of the bone. Okay, so when we talked about the bones, we know that in inside the uh, bones, red, there's red marrow, yellow marrow, and white blood cells are formed. And so how does it get in and out? Well, right there, see that little hole right there? You can see where the blood vessel is running through. I'm gonna actually have to 
break the fibula here so we can see a little bit better. Okay, so you wanna look for this. And right there, you can see the blood vessel. That right there is a blood vessel that's running into uh, the bone. So you would have uh, veins and arteries running in and out. Okay, so even though bone is connective tissue and it's a very thick tissue, um, it's still alive and so it needs blood flow. And you can see that hole right there. Okay, so that's where it enters into. There is a blood vessel, very cool. And you can see that hole right there. Okay, that's how bones get their blood supply. Um, and then also when they produce the red blood cells, the white blood cells, um, that's actually how it then, you know, of course it exits. So you have a, a vein and an artery that would be running into these bones. Okay, so again, just to kind of get a good look at these joints, we have a, um, a you know, a fracture there now. Okay, so again, this is the diaphysis of the long bone, and the outside of the bone is called the periosteum. And let's see if I get these, and we can look at the bone marrow. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now let's look at the inside. So again, the outside is the periosteum. Okay, the inside is the endosteum, and now you can see the medullary canal. Okay, and within that medullary canal, you can see the red marrow, that spongy bone, but <clears throat> I think you get a pretty good idea of what's inside the bones there, okay? And that's just coagulated blood. That's what happens when blood stops flowing. Okay, okay. and again, here's another hole where blood gets in and out of the bone. Okay. okay. So in review, uh, we saw all four tissue types. So if you're going to do this at home, uh, again, you just need um, you know, a paper plate or aluminum foil, keep your surfaces covered, and you can use regular household scissors. So you're gonna start by looking at the skin or the integumentary system. You'll work your way um, through looking at the connective tissue underneath, the fascia, the tendons. You'll be able to find the ligaments and the proximal and distal ends. Um, you'll see hyaline, hyaline cartilage, uh, you're going to be able to see nerve fibers, and then you'll see the bundles of muscle tissue, which this is again the striated muscle, nerves, and then you'll work your way down to the bones, and which is also connective tissue, and you'll see here this is the fibula, and this here is the tibia. Okay, so when you're done with your dissection, um, you could put this directly into the garbage can. You wanna take your instruments that you use, your scissors, and put them in the sink. Make sure you wash them with hot water and soap. You wanna wash your hands for at least, you know, again, with 20 seconds washing your hands. Um, and wipe your countertops down with disinfectant spray.